All right, so picking up where we left off, we were finishing up the first row of keyframes in the last video. So I wanna show you how to output a, a test animation and actually save it as a, a GIF or a GIF so that we can upload it to Canvas so you can see what the output is, the end product is. And to do that, I need to open it up in Photoshop. I find it in my folder. In my folder for assignment three, I'm keeping my rough storyboard sketch. And then I have two Photoshop files. So this is very important to, re to remind you of. Um, an assets file and a stage file. So I'm gonna open both of those up in Photoshop. They look identical, but they're very they have very different purposes. And remember that in the assets file, we have just lots of different layers, lots of different tools to play with. And then the stage file is where we put our finished frames all flattened together. So there are other ways to do this in Photoshop, but this is the, the kind of cleanest, simplest direct analog to making, ah, sorry, it's gonna ask me to do this. It's the clearest analog to making animation by hand, either using photographs that you build from different props, like a stop motion. So I have the nose, different versions. It's been a weekend since I last worked on this, so I have to kind of familiarize myself with these different, different options, right? So that's the, the assets. On the assets, you build the frame you want, and then you duplicate the frame onto a new blank layer. And then on the stage, you just put basically your film strip of the animation and it will show all the steps as flattened layers. So I have four frames so far. I actually have five, but one of them is the, the final frame of my animation that I'm working towards, right? So the question is, now that I've done that, I've made the frames for the first row of my animation. I took four of them instead of three. You can take as many as you think it needs. Now I'm gonna run an animation test and then actually save it as a GIF so I can post my progress because today we're halfway through the project. It's good to post your progress when you're, when you're able to. So how to do this? You first go to Window and then Timeline. These are the animation tools within Photoshop. If you're doing it for the first time, you have to select a Create Frame Animation instead of Create Timeline Animation. So once you create frame animation, you'll get this screen. When you're in this screen, you go to the Window Options for Timeline. You click in the upper right-hand corner, and you say Make Frames from Layers. So that will take your individual layers turn them into basically a film strip of images that it can play at a different sequence. So as I've mentioned, I think in the previous video, all this timeline tool does is control the eyeball next to the layers. So for number one, you see how it's turning on my first layer, but I don't want that layer to show, so I'm gonna drag that to the trash. I'm not gonna hit delete, because if I hit delete, that would delete the whole layer. Instead, I just drag the the timeline to the trash, the timeline frame. So in Photoshop, these are called frames, whereas these are called layers. And then the next frame is my last frame in my animation. I don't need that yet, so I'll drag that to the trash as well. All I need are these first four frames, and I need them to play in sequence, and I get to set the timing. So underneath each one, I know the resolution is is a high resolution now with the this new projector we have in the lab so it's a little small but it says zero seconds under each of them if i hold click on one then hold down shift and click on all of them i can select an equal timing for all of them and i'm going to click on the little drop down arrow next to where it says zero seconds and i'm going to choose other and i'm going to use 0.3 seconds so just a little bit more than three frames per second. And then it's gonna play through forever <laughs> once I hit play. 
and it goes by pretty fast, but I can see that transformation from my first frame to my cat frame is pretty much what I want, right? And then it jump cuts a little directly. And it's a little goofy, but that's what I'm going for. All right, so now how do I save this as something I can post to Canvas? So this is new. Once you have the animation test, this is not your final animation, right? It's not, I mean, it actually does meet the requirements of the assignment. It shows a transformation, but it's not using a full nine keyframes minimum, but it's good progress. So now what do I do? I go up to file and I'm not going to say save as I usually would. I actually have to go to export because I'm saving it for a particular device. So we're saving it for the web. So we go to export and then we go to save for web in parentheses legacy. Because this is basically saying this is an old kind of format. Photoshop is now able to save animations and videos as MP4s, as movies. But here we want it to be a, a GIF, a GIF file because it takes up less memory, it can play automatically in a browser, you don't need any software to play it. So you open that up, save for web legacy, you'll get your GIF options. GIFs really, really shrink the, the size of the image by reducing it to no more than 256 colors. So you can actually select your colors individually if you want to, but I tend to just use the selective standard you can use perceptual or selective they both work pretty well and then it will try to reproduce your colors as best possible then you can just say play here this will give you a preview and if it doesn't fit on the screen it's because your resolution is quite high so i can shrink it to a smaller percentage which i can just do in this corner with the minus sign and it will show me the timing I put in, and it will show me my animation. If that looks good, then you say save. And really, the only thing you're looking for in the preview is if the colors really get distorted, or sometimes they get really noisy if you have a lot of color going on in your animation. Reducing it to 256 can, can hurt it. So I'm going to put it into my downloads folder. I recommend you put it onto your desktop. I'm going to keep the same name, but it's now going to have GIF at the end of it, right? You don't type that in. The computer does that for you. And you say save. And then I'm going to move that file from my downloads folder into my assignment folder. And this is just my test, so I'll mark it with gray. Now, how do you test a test? Well, I can upload it into Canvas and see if it works. If I just double click it, it's going to open up that GIF file in preview on a Mac, which is just the default image viewer, and it won't animate. Instead, it will show me the stack of images that make up that animation. So what is a GIF? A GIF memorizes a stack of images with a with no more than 256 pixels for any of those across all of those images right but then it also has what's called animation script embedded in it and an animation script when it's read by html which is for a website so if i open it not with preview or with photoshop but with a website and i i use safari for this because i feel bad for safari i don't use it for anything else but it will automatically open and animate. And that's what's great about the GIF format. Even though it's the very first digital art format that we had for graphic uh, interchange format. And it's very, very reduced in its pixels. It works for this simple reason. It can stack a lot of information and then a simple code that allows it to know how to play that information back. All right, so let's move on from there. So I've got my assets and my stage open. 
you want to know which is which. These are my assets. This is my stage. But before I want to add a new layer to my stage, which will be the next frame, I need to clear out my timeline. So I select all my frames, holding down shift, and then I drag them all to the trash. Remember, do not hit delete, or that will erase your layers. And then, just so I'm not distracted by it, I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to close the timeline. All right, and now I am back to side by side, get them at the same size and resolution here, building my next frame, informed by my storyboard sketch. But to post my progress, as it asks you to on the course outline, make sure you've posted in Canvas your storyboard sketch, and then a rough animation. So I'll call this a rough animation test, otherwise known as an animatic. And that's actually a way GIFs are used a lot today still. And then how do I post it? I post it just like I post any image on Canvas. I use the little picture icon, upload image. Then I take it from my folder, drag and drop in the GIF file. And it will automatically start playing because Canvas is on a website that is read by HTML. It can read the animation script. And it's a lot of fun in the class once we start to see some of your, your artwork move. I'll shrink it down so it fits nicely. And that's as far as I've gotten, right? So there's a lot of animating still to do. I'm going to keep this over in the corner. So my next transformation is to show the cat's mind being blown, right? So I go back to my assets. And I'm going to keep the nose where it is. I think I'm going to keep growing the whiskers a little bit because I have to remind myself of what I'm heading towards. And the whiskers are bigger here. So I think I'm going to grow the whiskers a little bit each time until the end of the animation. So let's start with the whiskers. Make a duplicate of them so I can keep those assets. And then just Control-T or Command-T on a Mac. Hold down Shift and Option so they distort but grow from the center. Start growing them out just a little bit. And I'm going to increase their opacity from 49% to 59%. I'll just go in increments of 10. Okay, so that's a change. Remember, if you want to see what you last did, you can have that open in your stage and go back and forth. So from that to that. What's next? I want to start playing with the mouth and the eyes. Now its mouth is going to look less happy as its mind is blown, I think. So let's deal with the mouth. It's nice because I have these all labeled. The ears. The nose. They're organized in groups. The eyes, the whiskers. But even though they're all labeled, there tend to be a lot of assets as we keep building. The whites of the eyes, going to need that. Where is the mouth? So I can always go to my move tool and use auto select layer, click on the mouth shape and see. So let me label this. It's the one I didn't label, mouth. So I've got a few mouths that I've built just from a rectangle, right? Now I'm going to take the last one. I'm going to duplicate that. Command T. I'm going to start warping it. 
I'm going to tug it down at 